Let's get a little more into the oscillations of polymaths. A number of people have watched our recent videos and asked, where is the sound coming from? And in most cases, yes, it's coming from the multi-wave, not the polymaths. Since these all connect to the channels of QXG without patch cables, I can understand the confusion. We'll be getting into the multi-wave and how it makes sound, but in the meantime, I do want to go over a little bit about a couple of polymath's deeper functions, including the settings that can make it a useful sound source on its own. As you may already know, polymath's channels consist of a two-stage function generator and an oscillation section. The oscillations are controlled in amplitude by the function generator, and the result appears at the output jacks. When we use them in turn to control the amplitude of an audio oscillation, such as from multi-wave, these slower oscillations, let's turn those off and then back on, they create effects such as tremolo, echo. So again, the polymath is not making the sound. It is controlling the amplitude of a waves from the multi-wave using the QXG. But Polymath is not required to be connected to QXG. We can use its functions to control whatever voltage per controlled whatever voltage controlled parameters we like throughout the system. For example, let's monitor the QPOS. And use it to filter a waveform from multiwave. If we patch a polymath's output to control the filter frequency, there you go. be thinking polymaths has eight outputs and the QXG pair has eight control inputs is polymaths overkill for something like QPOS that does have a robust a robust set of control inputs but not quite eight this is one place where polymaths submixing options could come in handy if we hold the two buttons, we turn the windows green to indicate that we've turned on submixing. What this does is create different mixes at the polymath's outputs based on which jacks have been patched. If we take output one, we get channel one. If we take output 2 without patching output 1, we get channels 1 and 2. On down the line. So if we take output 8, we get all 8 channels on a single output jack. But here's the thing, if we patch to any of the outputs to the left of the submix we created, that will break those channels out and the ones to their left into their own submix. For example, patching into output 4 removes channels 1 to 4 from output 8 and puts them on output 4 instead. Changing 
up the span pattern, we'll create different temporal layers on these outputs. spread, if we'd like, we can make some of them overlap and coincide. Now, if the output level exceeds the maximum, it will fold over to generate more complex signals. If we monitor these oscillations directly, we'll hear that they go right up into audio rain. And in fact they are, like the very fast maths audio rate oscillations before it, made to be positive going signals that are ideal for use in a function generator. However, if we long press the mode button right above the rate control, we'll turn that light orange and the oscillations become bipolar, more ideal for use with audio. The shape control morphs these oscillations from saw to triangle to ramp. And when listening to them directly, we can hear that saw and ramp basically sound identical. In this state, they additionally will track one volt per octave at the rate control. when the rate attenuverter is opened all the way up. And just as when using them for modulation, we can create different submixes. Let's take output 8 to the left input of QPOS. Here we have all eight channels of polymaths in that left input. But if we take output four to the right input, then we have two mixes of four each at left and right. Listening directly, as I mentioned, we can hear that saw and ramp on the shape sound basically the same, but we can also press beyond the boundaries using voltage control and bring in some noise. additional submixes, let's use outputs 2 and 6, and we'll use those to modulate the QPOS at audio rate, FM again.
Submixing and bipolar oscillations are great for using polymaths outside of the QXG context, but probably also for things we haven't thought about, maybe even using them with QXG. So if you're using these features on polymaths or have ideas for other things to do with them, let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching and happy patching.